Hey everyone, this is Search for Mage Motors. We have a 2009 or 10 Audi A4 with a 2.0 little turbo engine. Um, and customer brought her in with a not your everyday misfire problem. So the car came in, it was misfiring constantly. We pulled the codes several cylinder misfires and a couple of uh, camshaft adjuster solenoids codes that was uh, for cylinder number one solenoids which are over here they adjust the valve lift and the exhaust camshaft um, we cleared the codes car straightened out started running absolutely fine but then after a short drive, we popped a couple of codes for a cylinder misfire. And then now on idle, you could clearly feel it misfiring, not not constantly, but every once in a while. I'll show you in a second. So it's running almost fine, but every several thousand RPMs, or every or several times a minute, you could feel it misfire. And it throws codes for cylinder number three misfire. Well, what the customer did already, some other repair shop, they replaced the PCV valve. This is the aftermarket PCV valve. I would not suggest using any aftermarket parts for these cars, but that's what they put in there. They replaced the coil packs. As same thing, the aftermarket coil packs. I wouldn't suggest using those as well. And probably original ones are gonna be cheaper than aftermarket. That's what I see a lot of times in our stores here. Now, they replace the spark plugs. These are some decent spark plugs and GKs. Um, the spark plug, well, it looks like brand new because it was put in not even 100 miles ago. Um, so we try to replace the spark plug again just to make sure it's not a spark plug, maybe it's a defective spark plug. We swap the coil packs around to make sure it's not a coil pack. And the, uh, the misfire just stays in one cylinder. So if you look at the misfire monitors, they all show zeros. But then once in a while, you'll see cylinder number one misfire. Throw one, two, or ten misfires, and then it straightens out and just reads zeros. May actually take a while. Yep, see, there you go. You could actually feel that in the car's running, like you could feel the car jerks a bit when that happens. Well, that's understandable so this is it this is how it works right now yep see another couple more misfires there are a couple of ways of testing and checking that the sure way the, the best way I, I'd say to check if it's a carbon buildup or anything else related to that. I've seen a lot of times the intake camshaft lobes move on the shaft itself, causing misfires, and then I, I haven't seen them cause valve damage. Um, go look at the codes. Oh, this one is pre, if, if it's a carbon buildup, that would be a pretty severe carbon buildup. Because uh, if you look at the live, the uh, freeze frame data, it's misfire. It's it's misfiring in a hot engine. Um, usually, the first signs of a carbon buildup misfires is if you check the codes, and the coolant temperature would be very low, close to the uh, close to the ambient temperature. Then you definitely know 
that it's a misfire because of the carbon buildup. But it would misfire only for first couple of seconds, 10-15 seconds at a time, only on a cold startup. Throw some codes and then straighten out and for the rest of the day it could be running absolutely fine. So if you're getting intermittent misfires and you check your freeze frame data and you see that your coolant temperature was very low, like approximately approximately the outside temperature, then you know that that there was a misfire because of the carbon buildup. Oh yeah, and it, it was only misfire at the idle. So if you see the idle speed and uh, cold the engine and the misfire, and that's the only time it misfires, then you should know that this is because of the carbon buildup. Now this thing, we're gonna approach uh, a little different because it misfires when the engine is hot. There is still a possibility that it's a carbon buildup, just because the uh, the misfires are so inconsistent and so rarely showing up. It still could be that, that there's a carbon buildup. Like, see, it's a 24 misfire so far, 25. Um, but we're gonna do a compression test. You should definitely do a running compression test to see if any sticking valves are in place or anything like that. That would probably show you if the intake uh, camshaft low moved. I highly doubt that because uh, then it would be a constant somewhat misfire or it would have some sort of like a pattern to it. This one is absolutely random like see it's misfiring right now. It could stop for quite a bit of time, couple of minutes. Then uh, you let it sit for a little bit, it starts misfiring again, then it stops. Like, see, it, now it just keeps on counting the misfires. Five minutes ago, I was looking at it and it wasn't doing that. It was doing like this, like, see, it slows down and doesn't misfire anymore. So, do a compression test first, do a running compression test after that, and then see. Nice handy compression extension tool. Comes in real handy. When you try to put a regular compression hose in there, in the spark plug tube, and then it gets stuck inside, and you're trying to twist it out, that kind of sucks. So this is a hard tube you put in, and then you put your compression hose in there. I usually do a compression test with about around 10 compression strokes. You could clearly hear them if you took all the spark plugs out. So here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just to be sure that you're comparing apples to apples, try to make sure you're doing the same amount of compression. There you go, we got about 150 PS, right? We're gonna do the same exact way, all four cylinders to average out to see if it's the same compression in all four cylinders. So the number two is a little bit lower. So cylinder number three, around the same as the cylinder number two. And cylinder number four, about the same as well. Let's recheck the cylinder number one, which was the highest for some reason. Oh. Yeah, it's about the same. All right, so our regular compression test shows no abnormalities. Let's do a running compression test. The running compression test is when you you gotta take the these the uh, valves out of the compression tool, put it in the cylinder, put all the rest of the spark plugs and coil packs into the back end, and start it up, and see where the needle is gonna be fluctuating. You have to remember the 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 range where it fluctuates, and all the cylinders should be. And around the same level. There you go. We put the compression gauge in. We took the valves out. 
for the tubes put the spark plugs and coil packs into the rest of the cylinders i'm gonna start the car up and see where the gauge is gonna be jumping around now it's running obviously it's misfiring because it's missing one of the spark plugs so uh, the gauge is jumping right a little bit past 50 psi so about that we should see on all four cylinders there you go we got cylinder number two connected and we got gauge jumping right about the same right past the 50 psi mark the same as the cylinder number one which is good magic cylinder number three connected and we have the same readings about uh, right past the 50 psi It looks like maybe the news used to fluctuate a little higher in other cylinders. So check that on the cylinder number four. But it does go past 50 psi, which is a good sign though. Number four connected. And the reading is about the same as the rest of them. So at this point we're gonna rule out a sticky valve or anything compression related. Um, we tested the coil packs, tested the spark plugs. The only thing left is a cylinder number three injector and cardboard buildup. Either way, we have to take the intake manifold off. So we're gonna take it off tomorrow. If we don't find tremendous amount of buildup, we're gonna replace the injector and clean the carbon. If we do find a lot of buildup, then we're gonna clean the carbon deposits first, and then. And then we're gonna proceed with the rest of the diagnostics. And then we're gonna come back to those little solenoids over there. This is an intermittent problem. It obviously has nothing to do with cylinder number three, but we did have the code for that. So most likely there's a problem under certain conditions. I will take it down on the highway and see how it does. See if it throws those codes again to proceed with diagnostics. And do yourself a favor, always pay attention. You see, while I've been working on this, I noticed that the coolant level was low. I looked around, I found that there is a water pump leak. I'm gonna try to address that as well while we're doing the carbon buildup cleaning.